Okay. Fury, part one and two. Overall, this is a, a good uh, two episodes. But it's just me, and I always feel bad as a guy saying this. I don't really care for the quote-unquote girl power episodes of any show. Not because I have anything against women or feel they should be seen as, you know, lesser or, or anything. It's just... On a whole, girl power episodes always seem really cliche and really forced to me. They either force, uh, and this one avoids some, but they usually either force male, the male characters to either act dumber than they would, or uh, to put, poor, put forth sexist attitudes when whether or whether or not they're out of character. They sidestep mostly the, the sexist attitude, except for the ending tagline with the Flash, which I really just... I mean, it's kind of like a ha ha. Look at oh, look at that goofy man who doesn't get it, and, and it doesn't work for me. And I really wish that line wasn't that whole little bit wasn't there. Um, I guess what it is, it's like goes out of its. And, and these are none of the things that are negative per se. I just always think they're ham ham fisted, ham handed. Like like they in the episode they have. Um, uh, plague of, I think it's a bacteria, it's whatever, it's a sickness that only affects males. So all the males are dropping like flies, justly, and it's up to the women of the world to step up. And they go out of their way to just show case after case of, of women stepping up, and they stop and go, oh, looks like they're doing a good job, like they can have, of course they can handle themselves. I understand that you need to put this message forth, and it's not said enough. That you have that, that that when you do get a chance, people tend to push it real hard. But when you push that, that's so hard. You take it just doesn't work for me. Yes, women are capable. Yes, they can do these jobs. Yes, they are more than just you know people to sit at home, have sex with me, and make me a sandwich. Of course, and I want you to explore these things, but don't... Don't spoon-feed me this. Don't ram it down my throat. I understand why they do that, but it annoys the piss out of me. Have it more organic. Have, And thankfully, thankfully these two episodes... Um, they don't go the whole way. They they have uh, the main villain, Artemis, um, who I guess really struck a chord with me because uh, I'm finally going back and playing Metal Gear Solid 4, and anyone knows that, that there's the Beauty, uh, Beauty and Beast unit, uh, which is comprised of these poor... Uh, women who as young girls were horribly scarred by war and are just mentally broken. Like, just totally fucked. And I look at Artemis' story and go, that's really interesting. I wish she, there would be more of a through line with that and they have the whole reveal at the end. I mean, she, she just hates men. And I always hate the hate and kill men plot because I'm like, well, what do you do when all the men are dead? It's not gonna work. It's not a sustainable society. It, <laughs> male and female were created uh, to to reproduce. Uh, it's one of their thing. That's one of the things. That's how you propagate the species. Unless women are going to start having little buds and grow into new women, e, e, I don't know. I, I, I always hate those plots. Like, kill all the men. Kill all the women. What are you going to do when they're all dead? You're going to be fucked. That's what you're going to be. 
Uh, but you, you understand her scarring. You understand why she is so screwed up. And even uh, in a really, cl I kind of hate it, and I kind of love that this line is here. That uh, Hot Girl makes uh, that says, uh, you know, essentially, you know, she's just kind of she in a way, or depending on how you look at it, she's just going and making you know the next leap of logic uh, based on uh, Amazonian teachings, you know the. The, you know, their track record with we don't need man's world, man's world is poisoned, the whole shebang, and that this is possibly, you can see, is a logical extension of that philosophy, which Wonder Woman, I mean, they're having a back and forth, and that's really good. I don't want to denigrate this episode, and my only beef is with the choice of convention, the choice of genre, because it'll... You, and it does have those ham-fisted moments with, like, the women can do it. Of course they can, but do you have to sit there and just wave a giant banner? I mean, subtlety, complexity. Just... I, I get annoyed because the episode isn't. Those episodes of shows aren't as strong as they should be. They just fall into cliché, and it annoys the crap out of me. They try to balance it out here. They, I'm, this has turned into a uh, rail against those kind of episodes more than these two episodes in particular, which for the most part are very, like I said before, very well done. Hawk Girl is given something to do. Now I said I don't give a crap about Hawk Girl, and I still don't. Uh, but she's pretty entertaining in this episode. I'll give her that. They make her question what Artemis is doing. You know, and she's the one kind of poking at the, the, the Amazon society and all this stuff. Um, one of the bad traits is they do make the men a little dumber. Now, I understand Superman falling victim. I understand maybe even in Flash and Green Lantern, considering the story. But Batman recognizes the threat. Recognizes the threat. And... Instead of going in like a lot... He understands he's attacking only the male population. And he still stays out, out there, you know, fighting to save the day and whatever. He's Batman. The larger point, the larger threat is this disease. It's going to... Ki it's killing all these men and putting all the other... All these women at risk... Because they're they're having to cover for all the stuff that men are, you know, all these men dropping like flies. They're having to cover for everybody. So the stress on women and the death and that has got to be great too. This is the real threat. I know people are dying and there's explosions and fires and bad shit. But that's not going to be alleviated uh, until you take care of the real threat, which is this disease. So why isn't Batman back in the Batcave? full-on surgical gear and all this, every fail-safe he can, try to prevent, or even the further in, infection of himself, trying to come up with a cure or something. I mean, it doesn't seem... At a certain point, I mean, and they have John Jones step in, and there's nothing wrong with the Mag Martian Manhunter getting some screen time, but he gets kind of the Batman role, but I guess even then he falls. I just... You would think that the... You would think that the male characters would be more on top of this. And I hate the fact uh, that the cure is such a throwaway line. They're like, oh, we're so glad that we found her notes and then we could save you guys. It's so, I mean, it's such a throw. And, well, I guess the bad guys are beaten, so now we're just going to... Everyone's better! Hooray! Have there be a... Re oh, we found her No. Well, who developed... You Neither you or Hawk Girl are scientists. Who did you talk to? There's loads of scientists, female and otherwise, in the DCU. You could have had them say that. Or if you really want to push the women can do anything, how about that um, they, you know, took a sample and they explained more what's going on and they, and their own things, uh, they worked with uh, some prominent female scientists at Star Labs or what have you. And they were able to uh, 
crack the disease and stop its spread before it even going further because they could get a pure sample from when uh, they fight Artemis in her, you know, death jet. Uh, that would have been a positive. That would have highlighted highlighted the real need for uh, women in the scientific fields, which they're which today they still are, they're still pressuring. They're still trying to get more women into the sciences. And it would have shown that would have been something good, and instead we get this throwaway line, and it, it bugs me. It bugs me because not because it's bad, because I want it to be better. If if you're going, I like, guess just keep coming back to the point. If you want to have this message, if you want to make that kind of story, make that story. Don't. Don't dumb it down, or don't make it throw fill it full of cliches just for the because that's what the story call because that's what you do in those stories. Challenge me, challenge the conventions. Don't just challenge the convention of the we you know we can do it too you know women can do it too story. Challenge the conventions of that story. The same trappings we see dozens of times over, and just annoys the ever loving crap out of me. And once again, I don't mean to sound bitter because there's nothing really wrong with these episodes overall. I like that they throw in uh, villains in the piece that uh, aren't, you know, DC. Well, they're known, but even I don't. I uh, I don't know much about them. I know Shade is a Starman villain. I'm thinking Copperhead. I don't. I know of him. I don't really know much about him. Uh, Star Sapphire, they gave her, like, an Australian accent or something, because they're not doing Hal Jordan, so they don't... I mean, it can be... I assume it's still Carol Ferris. It's just Carol Ferris, you know, DC Animated Universe version, however that works. Um, Samurai Ninja Lady, who's... Maybe Katana? Katana? I, hell if I know who the hell she is. No clue. But I and I like that they're throwing in these other characters, and they actually have something to do. Uh, the enemy below, they had Deadshot, and I'm assuming they couldn't say his name because, like, the same thing with uh, Deathstroke in the Teen Titans Go cartoon. Uh, they couldn't say Deathstroke, so they changed it to Slade. So I'm assuming that's why they didn't call Deadshot Deadshot in that episode. But it was still Deadshot, and I was like, "Oh, it's Deadshot." Here, here's you know. Uh, Grundy, I know Solomon Grundy, Grundy's you know, been in a lot of stuff, but it's really nice to see these, not also ran, but lesser known in uh, villains and give them some screen time and uh, some ability to, to introduce them to people like me who, or, or uh, you know, who know more, who know some DC stuff and would like to know more. And to, the, you know, the kids who would be watching this who would be like, oh, well, I know Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, okay. But who are these people? What are they about? That's interesting. You know, you don't have to throw out the Joker or Lex Luthor every episode, you know. You can, you can have somebody different. And even Artemis. Uh, I don't know if she's a creation just for the show or if she is a regular recurring Wonder Woman character. I do enjoy and read Wonder Woman, uh, but I'm I've, it's only in recent years and I'm far uh, less versed in it than I would like. So overall, I I have to say these are positive episodes. It's just my baggage with the, you know, quote-unquote girl power stuff that I get tired of and I expect more. Uh, that's it.